this is going to be an exciting beginning. One time, one by parts, and then you're back to this, which we've already done, right? Which is nice. So then you can start to think about uh, a pattern for higher order, do it higher groups. Uh, so then I get. This was s f of s minus f of zero. So we got Laplacian of a prime is this. Laplacian of f double prime is this. Oh, I went order and put it in. Which order should I put it in? I just So, well, what would your yes be for for this? Yeah, s cubed, f of s. Yeah, s squared, f of zero. Minus. S F prime zero minus F double prime is zero. Yeah. And if you look on the back of this handout, the one with the Laplace transforms, if you look on the back, it's actually written in slightly even better. Besides F and F, it's written with little y and big y because we're going to use this to solve the DEs, right? Y double prime and all that kind of business. Oh, cool. Pick the right one. All right, so let's do this one together. Let's, let's solve this thing on this paper together. So you're given this. I'm telling you to use the Laplacian to, 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 to solve it. Everybody in here should realize you could solve that a different way, right? a way that we've used before. You've got to realize that there's really not enough time to get fully into Laplacian and what you can do with it. We're going to talk a little bit about what, what if things are translated, what if things aren't perfect, how can you use that translation, how can you, you know. Uh, so it can handle much more complicated DEs than this, but we're just, you know, we don't have enough time to really explore all that. but. If I attack this with the Laplacian, just keep the same ideas.
So try to rewrite that. See, I just attacked everything with the Laplacian. Laplacian is a linear operator. That's why it can, it can distribute across plus and minus. You can take constants out of it. That is trying to be a five. I love fives and s's, they're good for me. Try to use the big Y and little y notation because it more directly relates to what we're trying to do. Oh, I also gave you some conditions here, right? See how important those are now. catch up to you. So what's the Laplacian of the second derivative there? So we use this guy. Not big S up, big S Y. So here I'm gonna put S squared. Big Y. S. I like it. And then you can get a minus S Y at zero. Minus Y prime at zero. Plus five times this Laplacian. That's big Y. Yeah. And then finally, good Lord. Jeff. Plus four, and this I can write as. this uh all right let's see where's the first place where it shows up um so right here what did i put here in that little Laplacian of f Laplacian of f which we call big ass f of s which is what it is bless you so that's a part of each of these that's why there's a big ass f in each of them but the Laplacian of y itself is just yeah it's big ass y I mean, that's the idea. That's the relationship. Little y, big y. If I integrate little y, I get big y. Just like if I integrate f in 180, I get big S f, right? Well, here this isn't a direct integral, but we just kind of borrow that just to make it real quick to see the relationship between the two. Big S y is Laplacian applied to little y. Yeah? Why couldn't you use the, uh, the big one like that? So the one uh, divided by the square? Because this isn't T. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Equals. Yeah, so where's T in all of this? This we should be used to from section 4.9. Where, where's T in all of this? What does Y double prime mean? T squared Y? T, T squared there. T is the, this is Y is a function of, Y is F of T. Y is f of t. That's why I can replace these f's with y's. 
just like you know you did when you first learned functions. Y equals two x. Well, f of x equals two x, right? Yes. So I think y is just the Laplacian y. Beautiful. It's not the antiderivative of y. Also. Exactly. We just kind of borrowed that notation because it is an integration. It's not the integral of it, but it is an integration. It's got the little extra piece in it. But we just borrowed that to make the relationship clear. In this context. Yes. I like in the Laplacian context. I like it. And if you have a problem with that, you know, the old time machine, go back in time, say, stop doing that shit. Come with something better. Because it's too late. It's been, it's been decided on. What about this? What about this year? Nine. 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 Or, yes. Minus, minus two. two. Minus two. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think you have to do? What do you think you have to do now? I mean, what's the, what's the unknown here? I mean, I know y of zero. I know y prime of zero. Right? So, what's the unknown? That's big ass y. y. And remember, what's big ass y mean again? The Laplacian of the answer. Right? Y is the answer. So, if I can get y, big ass y alone, what can I do to it to bring it back to the answer? I just went away from uh, little y to big y. But how do I get back to little y? I use the inverse Laplace. So I can get y, big ass y by itself. I can just inverse Laplace each side, and I've got the answer. Now, you know, it's not quite that easy. Very often I have to use partial fractions and break it up so I can compare it to the inverse Laplace stuff. You guys with me? That's the idea. But that's why, like I told you, this is purely algebraic now, right? This is what I meant. Are there any derivatives left in here? No, there aren't. It's just one variable, and then I just got to plug all this. Now, if you didn't know these, you could just put C1, C2. So to be honest, you don't have to have an IVP, but if you do that, then you can't really inverse the plus it easily sometimes. Uh, so thankfully, we know this shit, right? So what do I get here again? S squared Y. Minus seven halves s minus four plus five s y minus twenty twenty no minus what is this one thirty five over two plus four y equals nine over s minus two. Now I'll take a minute and solve for big ass y. Just to remind you guys, I know this is hard to believe, so you have to remind yourself this, but I will be letting you use this on any quiz or test I give you, right? Probably just a test because we don't have time for this. Right? Okay. So, I mean, you can have those out. Where's the one I gave you guys? Here it is. That one. Yay. So, you can use that. So let's see, I guess, if I collect all my Y stuff together, let me just forget writing this to below of S, okay? Notice how you get uh, 1, 5, 4, 1, 5, 4. I mean, that's, if you look at it, it's not surprising. Um, where'd it go, where'd it go? Here. And then if I put all the other stuff on the other side, uh, plus 7 halves S, plus 4, I've got to put that together with 35 over 2. That sounds exciting. That's it, right? I think it's it, right? Get uh, y times s squared plus 5s plus 4 equals 9 over s minus 2 plus 7 over 2s uh, plus whatever the hell, 43 over 2. And then what do you think you do? 
Divide by that. I like it. Y of s equals 9 over s minus 2. Might as well factor this thing as we do this. Is that Come on, plus 4. Plus 7s over 2 times s plus 1, s plus 4. Good lord, Jeff. Your s's and your parentheses are becoming 1. Uh, plus 43 over 2. I could have just put that all together, but oh well, let me just do that right now. Wow. And now what do you think you need to do? Oh, yum, yum. Huh? Not really. You actually want to do the opposite of that, to be honest. I mean, I just put those together because you could do this in one partial fraction. You actually want to break these up. Because if I had 9 over s minus 2 by itself, well, I know what that goes back to. It just goes back to 9 e to the 2t, right? So if I can break these up using partial fractions, I should be able to inverse Laplace each piece. So how would I do that? Let's see. How could you work on this year? A over s minus yeah, you got 9 over s minus 2, s plus 1, s plus 4 equals a over s minus 2 plus b over s plus 1 plus c over s plus 4. And then I don't know if you guys, so, um, how do I say this? So you get 9 equals, now, now what's the quick way to do this? What does A get? Yeah, it's going to get everything that's not this, because that cancels, so it gets the other 2. And then B gets the other 2. Yeah. And then C gets the other 2. So I know the, the way to do this, just letting S be a certain number. Yeah, so like if s is negative 1, you get 9, if s is negative 1, and why, why can't I do that, Chef? Why am I allowed to do that? It doesn't matter what s is. is. That's supposed to be a true relationship no matter what s is. All right. Okay, so if s is negative 1, I get 9 equals, that's 0, that's 0, right? This is negative 3 times 3. I get 9 equals negative 9b. All right, that kicks a lot of ass. You guys have seen that method before, right? I think. Hopefully. Some of you guys sound like you haven't really seen much partial fractions before, so again, I feel sorry for you. This is not the way it should have been for you. Again, if you don't like that, you can multiply all this shit out, but you see why I want to avoid that? I don't want to foil and cone. I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to. So if we're smart about it, we should be able to find a more clever way to do it. So I know b is negative 1. And then I can do it again. If s is 2. two. This is the only one that's left alive. I get 6 times 3. I get a 9 equals 18a. So a is 1 half. It's great. And then if I let s equal negative 4, I've got 9 equals dead, dead, uh, negative 6, negative 3, I get negative 18, right? Negative 6, no, no, no just try it again. Negative 6, negative 3, you get positive 8, there you go, buddy. So I get C is 1 half. Is A positive 1 half? Did I do that too quickly? No, you're fine, Jeff. Okay. So that means, what does that mean? That means that this piece, what do I know so far? Y of s equals, uh, let's see, 1 over 2 times s minus 2 uh, minus plus 1 over s plus 1 plus 1 over 2 s plus 4. And then I still have to do this piece, plus 7s plus 43 over 
2, s plus 1, s plus 4. Yay. Now, see, now, just to kind of truncate this a little bit, hopefully everybody's okay with this. Right, maybe we've already done a few partial fractions. You can just do the same thing that this guy we just did, right? And then your final step would be inverse Laplace both sides. So just go with me for a second. Let's pretend like we did this one, all right? Just to, we could do the whole partial fractions again if you really, really want to go through that. But uh, the Laplacian of this side, what does that become? Inverse Laplace, sorry. What's the inverse of plus the big ass y of s? Y of t. And what's and what's this one? What's one at? What's the inverse of plus of one over s minus two? E to the two t. I like it. Got it. Cool. And, and and so far, I mean, so each of these becomes just a. So that would be minus e to the negative, negative t plus one half e to the negative four t, and then plus whatever you get from that shit after you do partial fractions. So that's kind of like the the process. That's how it works. Now I cannot blame you if you're thinking to yourself, well, like you said at the very beginning of this problem, Jeff. There's an easier way to do that shit. But what do you do when you learn something new? You start with stuff you know how to do a different way, so you can check it. And then you move into the stuff that you can do that's more powerful, and that's the stuff that we, at this level of difficulty, we don't have enough time to get into. All right, so let me do uh, one more example of this with you. Oh yeah, I gotta give you the, oh shit. Ah, of course I forgot to go. Let me put, let me let you guys work on a problem. I'm going to run to the print shop. They printed out the practice test for me. Completely forgot to pick it up. Um, here, you guys try this problem out. So we got this here? Let you guys try this here. This should be, this is a little bit quicker problem. If I remember where I put it, here we go. Try to attack that with Laplacian. Oh, let me give you what you need here. There's your initial condition. I'll be right back. Turn you off.